Solid Edge with ST4 provides mid-range FEA capabilities for design validation. Using NX NASTRAN as a solver and a common Solid Edge interface making it easy for everyday uh, engineering use. In order to demonstrate that, what we'll want to do is we want to change our display configuration to that of the simulation, which kind of gives us a picture of the front, uh, one of the front wheels on the Iron Eagle. So what I'm going to do is we're simply going to open up this particular uh, sub-assembly and go right into that sub-assembly. Now here you can see that we've got the shaft where it's going to mount to the frame and then of course uh, the wheel mounted to the sheet metal bracket, U-shaped bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my display configuration uh, to just the parts that we want to work on for the simulation which are those two particular components. Now that we're there, I want to point out that in ST4 we've made some changes uh, where the user can actually create a surface geometry at the assembly level. In particular for sheet metal, we can also now create mid-plane surfaces. So you no longer have to go into the sheet metal file to do a mid-surface. You just simply uh, identify uh, the part tell it which side you want to offset it on and create uh, that mid-plane surface again at the assembly level and you'll notice that we've added the simulation geometry collector where it put that mid-plane surface so once that's uh, been done what we can do then is we can change our display to just show that surface and turn off the sheet metal part so I have another configuration just to do do that very thing so once we've uh, once we've done that let's go ahead and create an, a, uh, a study and I'm going to uh, just simply use the new study, but we have an option called Mixed and United Bodies. So this is a mixed uh, where we have a surface and a solid. And then once that's done, let's go ahead and fence in what we want to run an analysis on. It's easier to fence than to select singularly. And so we'll accept that and it's going to add it to our study. Now once we do that, um, you know, Solid Edge uh, ST4, you know, really does reduce uh, the need for physical prototypes through a wider range of uh, simulations, and we've got several of them, you know, whether you want to do uh, one on force, pressure, torque, uh, displacement, bearing, uh, we feel the need for different types of loads and constraints. Now in this case we're just going to do a force load on the front if the wheel was to make contact with a you know a post or anything while it's driving around the uh, the actual yard. So I'm going to change our uh, option to edge corner and identify where the shaft actually would bolt to this part. And then I'm going to uh, put the force in a direction as if the, the, the uh, Iron Eagle was driving forward. I'm going to change the value to uh, half a uh, kilonewton and accept it. And then we can go ahead and apply a constraint on the top where this actually gets bolted to the frame. And then finally we just need to tell uh, you know, a solid edge where the, how these parts are connected. And then to do that we off offer manual methods, but I'm going to just use the automatic method. I'm going to tell it to look uh, search distance of 10 millimeters and then again I can just simply fence in the information and it will automatically go out and find the surfaces that would make contact and then it highlights them and you can see here very quickly that it found the bottom of the shaft and the top face uh, in order to create that connector so we'll go ahead and go ahead and tell it to create the connector now one thing that's uh, new in Solid Edge and ST4 is the connector uh, symbols. You'll notice that the blue uh, defines the source and it always points the arrow to the uh, target and then of course the target it points to itself and it's in red so it depicts uh, and gives you a better depiction of what's actually occurring. Another neat thing is we can come over to connectors if we want a better idea of where those connectors are maybe we want to make a change to them we can simply double click it automatically puts us in the edit mode we can change the search distance we can change the source or target face if we want but in this case I'm just going to increase the symbol spacing just so that it gives us a better depiction of what is going on and you'll notice that it actually created more symbols Alright, so once we're done there, then we're ready to actually mesh the part. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, mesh uh, properties. Uh, in ST4 we've extended uh, the options so that um, if you want to um, 
you know, add more parameters to your mesh, uh, you can do so. In this case, maybe you want to add quad edge layers. In the, uh, and I'm just going to add a layer, one layer. And then I'm just going to tell it using the default mesh to mesh the part out. When that's done, it gives you feedback as to the mesh, and at that point you can go ahead and solve. And so what it does is it's actually going to run it through the NX NASTRAN solver, and then, then when that's uh, done, it will actually process the results, which it's showing right now. One of the cool things in ST4 that we've made a change to is, as long as the part geometry doesn't change, you can change other things like material net, and it's not going to remesh the part. So that's one change, a nice change that we've made in uh, ST4. I'm going to change this now to the uh, top uh, plate, which is the surface, uh, and you'll notice that our uh, pressure, or our, excuse me, our force, it runs up to about 36.9, and that's a little higher than what we really want it to be. So in order to make a change, uh, what we want to do is just change the geometry a little bit, and that, that becomes very easy to do in Solid Edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change and turn all these parts back on, and then I'm going to go into uh, that sheet metal file, and I'll just turn off the background components while we're in here, and you'll notice that the part is actually an ordered part. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this and move all of these features to synchronous. So if you've been working in Solid Edge already and you want to move to a synchronous design, all you have to do is just move the features that you want into the synchronous mode. Now once I'm in synchronous, I might want to make a few changes. We've added the face relationships to the top menu here, and I'm just going to grab the parallel. And I want to grab this top face, and I want to make it sure that it stays parallel to this bottom face. Another thing I want to do is I want to lock in this dimension. So I'll just go ahead and click on the lock button. That way that dimension will stay uh, in a locked position. Now once we're done, we've converted it to synchronous design. We've made a couple of uh, relationship changes. We can actually turn on the background opponents and go back to the top level of this subassembly. Now once we're at the top level, I might want to make a few more changes. Now that it's a synchronous model, it's easy to make those changes. By using the control space bar, I can go to a face select, and I can actually pick uh, the face of this part. And just by simply grabbing the steering wheel, if I want to adjust the, the, uh, you know, the depth of this, I can, maybe I want to key in a value of 10 here. So I can bring it out 10 more millimeters. Or I can grab the side face. Again, just making synchronous changes at the assembly level because it's a synchronous part. So it makes it a lot easier. Maybe I want to take this in about 10 millimeters. So I'm adding, uh, you know, the, the depth of the angle, and I've, I've made this a little bit, a uh, little bit longer. What if I want to make a change where the wheel actually is? I can come down and grab uh, the holes, and if I grab the plane, it allows me to kind of willy-nilly move this where I want it to be. And so if I want to move the wheel up or down or sideways, whatever, I can. But in this case, we don't want to change the height of the wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab uh, grab that again, and I'm just going to ch uh, select the primary axis. And once the primary axis is selected, I'm going to just move it forward, uh, let's say, about 30 millimeters. So it's going to stiffen it up a little bit. Another new thing that we've added in uh, ST4 is something we call override property. So if we're at the top level of assembly and I just want to quickly override properties for a component, I can do so by selecting the surfaces, uh, which in this case is the mid-plane surface for our part, and maybe I want to change that to stainless or you know, aluminum or whatever. I can change the material. I think the parts light now is about five millimeters, so let's say we make it ten millimeters. And we accept it. And you'll notice if we come back to our geometry, under surface geometry, we've got override properties, 
and you can see that the properties are set to stainless at 10 millimeters. So we've also added uh, a collector showing the override properties information. Once we've done that, you'll notice that the study has gone out of date because we've made some changes. In particular, we've made some geometric changes. So I'm going to go back and just go back to our surface and solid only, which shows those two components. And then we can simply run the solve again. It'll remesh the part and resolve because the physical geometry changed. It'll, it had to remesh it. And it'll take about 18, 20, 21 seconds to uh, process this. So again, um, just some several things. You can accurately simulate more realistic design scenarios to reduce your physical prototype cost with additional loads and constraints that we were added in ST3. Uh, we can make uh, design refreshments or refinements and in, in even faster and easier with this synchronous technology as you can see. And then when our results come back, if we come up to our top sheet, I believe it was at 36.9 or something to that effect and you'll notice that we have greatly reduced the stress on this top uh, uh, U-shaped bracket for our wheel assembly by uh, thickening the model up and, and actually making a few design changes to it. So all of this is just built right into uh, Solid Edge ST4, in this case Solid Edge Simulation. So Solid Edge Simulation gives the design engineer much more powerful integrated analysis tools that are geometrically focused and process oriented so they can spend less time learning a new system and more time designing uh, their parts that meet their requirements. Hopefully this gives you a good overview of Solid Edge Simulation. Thank you very much.